I'm installing, testing, and comparing not one, but two different decoders in in-scale locomotives on Ron's Trains and Things right now. Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and if you'd like to see more Model Railroad tips, tools, and techniques, then be sure and subscribe down below and click that little bell icon so you can catch future videos. In a previous video, I showed you how I took three used locomotives that I had recently purchased, and I repaired them, upgraded some details, and got them ready to roll on my layout. The one thing that I didn't do to those locomotives was install the DCC decoders I needed for them to be able to run on my DCC layout. Well, today we're going to do exactly that project. I'm going to show you how I installed decoders in two of those locomotives, in fact, two different decoders that required two very different processes and some things that you're going to definitely want to check out. And I'm also going to show you how I put them on the layout, got the addresses set, and show you how they initially run. Do you have some tips that you would share about installing decoders? Or do you have questions about installing decoders in your own locomotives? Tell us about your thoughts in the comment section down below. Now let's head on over to the workbench. I'll show you what decoders I'm installing, how I install them, and then we'll go try them out on the layout. The first decoder I installed is a motor-only decoder. I installed a Digitrax DN163K1C in one of my Kato SD70 Max that I recently purchased. This was BNSF number 9838. I always write the locomotive number on the documentation that comes with the decoder and keep it in a file so I have a hard copy documentation of what decoder is in each locomotive. As you see, the decoder is a board replacement decoder, making installation super easy. If you don't have capped on tape on hand, be sure to keep the piece of yellow capped on tape holding the decoder onto the packaging foam as you will need it for the installation. The first step is to remove the shell of the locomotive. In most cases, you can simply pull down on the fuel tank and up on the shell, working it back and forth slightly, and it will release from the chassis. If this doesn't work, you can use the drop box method that you've probably seen others use on YouTube, using the jewel case as a way of getting the shell to come loose from the chassis. The old stock light board simply snaps into place. To remove it, I use a screwdriver to slide it backward on the chassis and then lift it out. Notice the motor pickups on each side of the motor. Be very careful not to damage them as you remove the light board or as you install the new decoder. Remove the capped on tape from the decoder and packaging and save it for later. After removing the decoder from the foam packaging, I put the light board on that same packaging and save it in the locomotive's jewel case. Before installing the decoder, insulate the top of the chassis with the capped on tape. Cut pieces of tape just long enough to bridge the top of the chassis and to fold down over the sides of the chassis slightly. But be careful not to allow them to go down far enough to interfere with the moving parts of the motor or the drivetrain. Per the instructions, install the tape in the three locations shown here, the most important of which is the center section where the motor pickups are on the decoder. You don't want to allow these pickups to touch the sides of the frame and short out. With the tape in place, slide the decoder onto the frame, being careful to make sure both motor pickups are under the decoder pickups. When in place, slide it forward to snap it into the mounting grooves.
you can now reinstall the body shell. As is often the case with Kato locomotives, you'll need to use a tool to make sure that the skirting of the shell slips under the filler detail on the fuel tank to allow it to fit properly. And that's all there is to it. This installation is complete. We will test this locomotive with the other one at the same time in the latter portion of the video. I had planned to install a third decoder in this video, a Digitrax SDXN 146-1E in my Kato ES44AC Jivo, but I had two issues with this installation. One, the decoder, while recommended for this locomotive, was actually designed for another locomotive and the capacitor did not fit in this locomotive around the light piping inside the cab area as outlined in the instructions. The second issue was that the decoder or the speaker were defective and produced so little sound that the prime mover was barely audible even at full volume and couldn't be heard at all over the motor and track noise when running. We will come back in a later video to this installation and install a different decoder in this locomotive. In the other SD70 Mac, BNSF number 8802, I installed a Digitrax SDN144K1E sound decoder. Again, this is a board replacement installation, but with the added necessity of milling the frame for the placement of the speaker. Again, I began by removing the shell and removing the factory light board exactly as I had done before. In this case, I needed to tear the locomotive all the way down so I could mill out the fuel tank area for the speaker as recommended by the instructions. I removed the screws that hold the frame halves together, snapped the fuel tank off the bottom of the frame, and removed the trucks, and then spread the frame halves apart and removed the motor and drivetrain. If you're not really familiar with how these parts go together, it's a good idea to lay them out exactly as they come out of the frame so you'll know how to put them back later. While all of the other parts are removed, the one thing I did not remove was the bushings that separate the two halves of the frame at the screws. My milling was done in a vise, but I needed to protect the split frame from bending together and keep the proper separation between the halves while milling. To do this, I cut a scrap of 30,000 styrene and fitted it between the halves of the frame along the bottom of the fuel tank area. At this point, I screwed the frame halves back together, holding the styrene strip in place. At this point, I took the frame to my vise for milling. The hole for the speaker needs to be toward the back of the fuel tank area of the frame. Now, I keep using the term milling, but I use the term rather loosely here. I do not have a milling machine, nor do I have a lot of machinist skills. However, per suggestion of the instructions, this round speaker will fit into a one half inch hole, which can be milled out with some simple tools that you may have in your garage right now. Now, if you lack skills with these tools or just lack confidence, you may want to have a professional do this job for you. But with some basic tools, some basic skills, some care and a little bit of nerve, this job can be done at home at your workbench. You should know that I have installed several of this same decoder in several other locomotives on my layout previously. This is not my first attempt. First, I used a half inch metal cutting drill bit in my cordless drill. If you have a drill press, that would be ideal, but with a steady hand and a good eye, this will work. I positioned the drill bit in the middle of the fuel tank area from right to left, but towards the rear and began drilling slowly. Do not get overly aggressive here as you can get into trouble quickly. You do not want to drill too deeply here as you can drill all the way into the motor cavity, which you do not want to do. Work slowly until the point of the drill just begins to reach that cavity in the gap between the two frame halves. Test fit the speaker for depth. The drill will not get your speaker all the way into the fuel tank, but it will get you close. When you've gone as deep as you're comfortable going with the drill, 
it's time to use a couple of Dremel tools. I used a burr bit to remove some more material from the bottom of the hole near the edges as the cone-shaped drill bit drills deeper in the center than al along the edges. I then used a grinding drum to smooth out the bottom and to slightly widen the edge all the way around the hole, as the one half inch hole fits the speaker very tightly. A little extra room makes for a better fit and much easier installation. Finally, I used a cutoff disc to cut the corners off the two frame halves where they come together at the rear of the hole to allow room for those speaker wires to fit into place. I used a flat file to smooth all the edges along the milled area and between the two frame halves, being very careful to make sure that nothing touched between the halves that would short out the locomotive. I test fit the speaker in place, then marked the path of the speaker wires along the side of the frame with a sharpie. A shallow channel will need to be cut to allow room for these wires. I used a cutoff disc in my Dremel to cut the channel, cutting just deep enough to allow room for the wires. A little extra depth probably will be needed right along the bottom edge of the frame to allow the wires to pass under the pickup strips when they're reassembled. At this point, I can start reassembling the locomotive. I reinstalled the motor and the drive shafts, making sure that the bearings fit perfectly into their mounts in the frame. I then installed the second half of the frame with the retaining screws. Before I tightened them down all the way, I reinstalled the trucks, then tightened the screws. In preparation for installing the decoder, I removed the piece of Kapton tape from the top of the decoder and used it to insulate the frame in the exact same way I did with the other locomotive previously. Before I could install the new decoder, I had to remove the motor pickups from the original light board and install them on the decoder. These pickups are soldered in place, so I held the pickup with some needle nose pliers, heated the solder joint with my soldering iron, and as the solder melted, I twisted the board away from the clip on the pickup. I repeated this process for the second pickup. Again, I kept the original board in the jewel case of the locomotive. To install the pickups on the decoder, I first applied a small amount of liquid flux to the mounting pads on the decoder and to the clips on the ends of the pickups with a super fine micro brush. I then snapped the pickups into place on the mounting pad and applied heat with my soldering iron and applied a small amount of solder. Be careful not to overheat the board or to apply too much solder and thus accidentally bridge the gap to another component on the board. I repeated this process for both pickups. With the pickups installed, it was time to install the decoder. Again, be careful to make sure the motor pickups fit neatly under the decoder contacts and are not shorting out on the frame. I routed the speaker wires down the groove that I had made in the side of the frame and installed the speaker into the hole that I had milled for it. With the speaker in place, I reinstalled the plastic fuel tank. The instructions call for holes to be drilled in the fuel tank to allow sound to escape, but I have done this both ways and can tell little difference, so I opted not to drill holes in this fuel tank. 
Next, I reinstalled the pickup strips, making sure that they fit nicely into their mounting clips and made good contact with the contact points on the tops of the trucks. The wiring on these decoders is quite delicate, and sometimes incidents happen. In this case, as I reassembled the locomotive, one of the speaker wires pulled loose from its contact on the decoder. Never fear, I was able to strip a bit of the insulation off of the wire and carefully solder it back into place. I placed the capacitor in the space at the rear of the decoder. This decoder fit much better than the one that I tried to install in the ES44AC. Finally, I reinstalled the shell, again making sure that the skirting fit under the filler detail on the fuel tank. Now it's time to take both of these locomotives over to the layout for testing. This last segment of the video I'm going to record uh, with a live voiceover uh, instead of recording it separately um, because I want you to see how I test these and want you to see how uh, I initially set them up and also how they run. Uh, we're starting with a locomotive, the uh, SD70 Mac, that has just a motor decoder in it, number 9838 here. So again, I use a MRC Prodigy wireless uh, uh, DCC system, and so you know this is going to work a little bit differently with different systems and different controllers, but uh, the, the general process is the same. First, I got to select the, the locomotive. Of course, a brand new decoder is going to be uh, address three, so locomotive three is what I want, and uh, let's just test it here. I'm going to turn on the light. And then let's just see motor control, turning it up slightly. And uh, we're going to need to do some adjustment on speed tables, obviously, because um, again, as I turn it up, put it back in the forward direction, uh, as I turn it to speed step one, you see there's nothing. Speed step two, eh, it's starting to move it too, so that's not bad. But if I turn it just to like four, it's run away really fast, so that locomotive is set to run really fast. Um, but that is a speed table and speed matching issue. The very first thing I always do is I set the decoder address to the locomotive number. So to do that, I, I am going to program on the main. I press enter. Locomotive number three is the number now, so that's what I want. Press enter. And then the address, I'm going to push the address on the locomotive, which is 983 eight enter and then these other things that come up automatically I'm just going to enter through them now you'll see as I change the speed nothing happens because I've changed the address so now I'm going to locomotive I'm going to select 98 38 now that we've got this correct address we've got it working well now I'm going to back this locomotive back up out of the way just out of the shot of the camera and we're going to bring in our other locomotive. I think you can probably already hear that locomotive starting up. I'm going to select locomotive three for this other new decoder. And now we'll test the lights. Let's just give it a little test. And you see that one, I had to get all the way up to eight uh, on my controller before it started moving. Let's test it in the reverse. There's one, nothing, two, nothing. You can hear the prime mover begin to roll up. Three, still no movement. Four, five, six, beginning to move barely at six. So again, we'll have to set the speed tables on this, but it is functioning and that's the important thing.
pretty good sound. Now let me go ahead and do this last thing. Let me uh, program the uh, address for this locomotive. Again, we're going to program on the main. It's number three at the moment. And we're going to set it to 8802. Enter. And then we just enter through the other options there. Now on three. Nothing happening, but we go locomotive 8802, enter, and there it goes. It had kind of shut down, had to go through the startup sequence there, but uh, there. see uh, see it functioning pretty well well I'm really glad to have these decoders installed and have these locomotives nearly ready to run on my layout I'm going to be doing some videos in the near future where I show you how I set the speed tables on these locomotives. I'm going to show you how I speed match them because they're going to be consisted together on my layout and running in tandem. So I'll show you how I set them up for that. And of course, every DCC system has some unique things about it. Each throttle works a little bit differently, and many of them have different CVs that they use for some of the different effects that you can get from them. I'm going to show you on the Digitrax decoders how to set them up for Rule 17 lighting, which is one of my favorite effects to use. You can see all of that in a couple of upcoming videos in the near future here on Ron's Trains and Things. Well, if you enjoyed this video, here's a link to some more videos that I know you're going to enjoy as well. I hope that you'll check them out. Also, take a moment to check out the description down below where you're going to find my promo code for Micromark that can save you 10% on basically any regularly priced items at Micromark.com. You're also going to find a link to my Amazon page and my Amazon Pick of the Week, some of my favorite model railroading and other types of products there, and links to my Patreon page and places where you can connect with me on social media. Well, I hope you'll join me each Tuesday as I bring you more great model railroad content, and I look forward to seeing you then. Tim, Lizzie?